Madam Speaker. Yes, for what purpose? Will the gentlelady yield? Yes. Will the gentlelady, the gentlelady yield? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I wanted to walk through Section 171.046 uh, uh, of your bill, because that's uh, essentially uh, where I amend the bill, and that's where your exceptions lie. So do you understand the difference between uh, the current language of, uh, of the bill and uh, the um, and the amendment that, that I'm offering up? Just one second. Let me get to that section, if you would, please. Well, while you get okay, to that, you know, that, that's fine. Well, uh, Madam Chair, while you get to that, um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is correct that uh, if my amendment got on the bill, that there would still be a bright line at 20 weeks. Correct? That I, I don't, I don't talk, I don't change the time period uh, to 21 weeks or 22 weeks or 19 or 18. That we leave it at 20. Correct? Okay. Yes. Is, is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. So, so the question really then becomes about um, the health of the woman uh, in, in my uh, amendment. Is that not right? Your amendment is broadening the definition of health to the woman, as I understand it. That, that is absolutely correct. And it, it broadens it to contemplate um, the, a physician whose care the woman is in making a decision about serious uh, health effects, not necessarily death, so we're, we're short of death here, but serious health effects of uh, carrying this pregnancy to term. Is that not right? Um, if you say so, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure you understand what the amendment says since you've, you've come up to table it. I do. do, do mm -hmm. you, okay, so you agree with me there. Um, and, and your current wording says that there must be a serious risk, right, and I preserve the term serious, uh, so there has to be, in my amendment, serious health impacts. So serious risk of a substantial and irreversible physical impairment of a major bodily function. Can you uh, provide the body with examples of uh, that would fall into that definition? It would be life-threatening to the mother. Okay. So this, I'm not talking about the portion of your amendment that says death, right? So that's clear. That, that remains unchanged in my amendment. I'm talking about serious risk of substantial and irreparable, irreversible physical impairment of a major bodily function. Okay. What was your question? Do you please provide us an, maybe an example that would fall into that exception. One could be, I think I mentioned it earlier, toxemia, um, yeah, in fact, I'm going to let the doctor, if you're going to talk about medical terms, I would prefer to have... Well, these are, legal, have these are legal terms, right? I mean, uh, the, the reason I'm concerned... Okay, is I, I, I'm not sure where you're going. Well, so. well, this is where I'm going. Yeah. Uh, I'm concerned that these words matter, and these words are going to be challenged in court, and these terms have some mm -hmm. meaning, right? So these are legal terms. And so what I'm trying to get okay. at is that... It has been drafted so narrowly, even the author of the bill herself, who spent a lot of time working on this, can't provide us with exceptions that might fall into it. And that's, that's what I'm concerned about. Because, because uh, in my view, a medical professional, a doctor who's caring for this woman, would be in the best position to do that. And that's why I broaden the definition and allow for an assessment of serious impact. Is that not right? Well, and Shia, in this bill, in the language, I do give the doctor full authority to make that decision. And but, it says on line five, the physician's reasonable medical judgment. The exception that I have in here is for the physical life based on the physician's reasonable medical judgment. Correct. Now, now you do include that physician's reasonable medical judgment, but then you qualify it in the rest of the exception. And you qualify it uh, by there needing to be an assessment of serious risk of substantial and irreversible physical impairment. How is, how is a physician at the time supposed to make a judgment of substantial and irreversible physical impairment? He, this person does not know what's going to happen in the future, right? 
do we know if a condition is reversible at the time that you make the diagnosis? What if you can't, what if you can't call balls and strikes about whether it's reversible or irreversible? See, so the medical judgment is qualified in the rest of your definition. And what I'm trying to do is unqualify it and say doctors should be able to call balls and strikes on these decisions and shouldn't be handcuffed in their medical judgment. That's what this amendment does. Yep. And, and, and so I'm wondering why that is, that is provocative to use when we, don't, when, when we do not change the 20 weeks we restore the full discretion, not the narrow discretion, but the full discretion of, of physicians. Why is that provocative to the bill? Absolutely not, Representative Anshia. I do give the doctor, the physician, the full authority to make that decision. What, is, what, is, what, what, what determination must the doctor make here that there is serious risk of substantial and irreparable physical impairment? Okay? What, does that not qualify the doctor's decision? And how can a doctor know if physical impairment is going to be irreversible? I imagine doctors all the time have to guess about whether something is reversible and irreversible based on the patient's medical history, based on the patient's age, based on these, the, the patient's relative health, on whether or not they, there would be an irreversible condition. Do you not agree? Okay, and please tell me your question again. Well, do you not agree with that assessment? No, I that don't. I believe that this bill will cover the conditions that we have outlined as exceptions. Okay, so, so you would agree with me, however, that you do condition the reasonable medical judgment of a physician by a determination of serious risk of ir irreversible physical impairment. Is that not correct? It would be the physical... So you qualify that judgment. Is that not right? Yes, I do. And how should doctors, how will doctors know, or how are they supposed to know, if there is an irreversible physical impairment of a major bodily function? Do, do, is that a black and white issue? And does that provide them guidance? Okay. Uh, Representative we are so fortunate to have a uh, superb physician here in the house and you know you're asking a question about a physician so i would right. like to let him respond and, to and, that and I'm, I'm pleased to I, but but i'd like to know as the author because these mm -hmm. these words should have legal meaning i mean i i the, the uh, dr bonden is 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 uh, an admirable member of this this body but not a lawyer didn't draft the bill i'd like to know from the person who drafted the bill what legal meaning we should be given, giving to this qualification of reasonable medical judgment? You have been asking me two parallel questions. Okay. And so I would like to make sure I, you know, yes, answer sure. each one, or each of your questions get answered, you know, accordingly. Yes, ma'am. Your question about what this piece of legislation says. I'm very specific that I am referring to the physical health to the mother. Then you ask questions about... Representative Stickland raises a point of order. The gentlelady's time has expired. The point of order is well taken and sustained. Chair recognizes Representative Anshia to close on his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, I hope you're able to follow a little bit of, of the dialogue with um, Chairwoman Lovenberg, the author of this bill. We were trying to contextualize what sort of guidance a physician would have with the narrowing of their medical judgment that occurs on page five in three different sections and on page two in one section. And I was, I was unable to discern from our dialogue uh, any guidance, frankly, about how a physician would be able to uh, act under, I think, this tortured and very narrow definition. It is very difficult, if not impossible, for a physician to evaluate whether there is an irreversible physical impairment. 
that speaks to an omniscient, if that's a word, if not I will make it up, to their ability to see in the future and determine whether or not a person is going to recover. If I ask every doctor in this body whether you could guarantee for me whether someone was going to have a, 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 a reversal in their condition, whether it be a coma, whether it be a uh, brain damage, no doctor would guarantee that. In fact, they would have no way of knowing. Because while medicine is a science, it is an inexact science, and we all know that from our personal situations. So this narrow definition really does adversely impact the medical judgment of a physician. That is a cause of concern of many of the doctors I represent, in light of the fact that I represent much of the medical district. Many doctors live in the district that I represent. And it is further a legal problem. In fact, for those who care about the constitutionality of the bill, it is more so a legal problem because it is so unduly restrictive to surrender the bill unworkable for doctors and secondarily unconstitutional because it fails to contemplate the health of a woman broadly. for a question. Yes, I yield. Thank you, Representative Inchi. I've got a couple questions here. Um, about your amendment specifically. You know, one of the things we do here in this body, in the legislature, is we regulate certain industries, correct? Yes. And so you stated earlier that with respect to this decision, that this decision ought to be restricted to to a, to a mother, uh, to her doctor, and to her spiritual advisor. What, so it, in a sense that the government and, and ought I, to not I believe be I added her, her God. Okay. So... But in after, fact, there was, after significant contemplation and prayer, okay. as many people who find themselves in, in this situation frequently engage in. But, but you also mentioned that the, that the government, that this body ought to not be in the business of calling balls and strikes in this area. No, I think you misread my, my statements. My statements are that we would pray, and in fact, the effect of this bill is to preserve the bright line of 20 months, but at the same time, contemplate the fact that these decisions need to be made by a woman, her family members, her physician, and her God. The important part here, for purposes of this amendment, is the physician. Because the way this, this bill is drafted, it does not, and I think, I think after, after much dialogue with the bill's author, we were able to ascertain that this in fact does limit the discretion of the physician. It does not expand it, it does not respect it, it limits it. And in fact, it limits it by this tortured construct of requiring a doctor to determine serious risk of substantial and irreversible physical impairment to a major bodily function. Not defining major bodily function, not defining irreversible, and not uh, defining substantial. So my, am my amendment here just makes it clear for the doctor. Well, and it allows the doctor to explain it clearly to his Representative patient. Vinci, I understand, and I agree with you that, that words have meaning and that we ought to make sure when we vote on a bill we, we need to understand what, what it's doing. So let's talk lawyer to lawyer here. Yep. I want to come back to my earlier question about what this body does in terms of regulating certain industries. Because numerous times this session, did we not, did this body not either vote to either weaken or strengthen regulations in certain industries? We do it all the time. Okay, sure. we do. That, that's so, right. So, but, but the question is, you try to strike a balance in regulation all the time. Okay, okay, so the so balance instance, that we're trying to strike here is, I think, a balance that is informed by 40 years of constitutional okay. holding. And that balance is between the viability of the fetus, and I read earlier from, from the Supreme Court case, and the health of a mother. I've even raised the bar in this amendment, Representative uh, Leach. I've said there has to be a serious impact. So I understand. It can't be a headache. It can't be uh, uh, some discomfort. It has to be serious. I, I, wanna, I just want to make clear, 
for the record that um, that this body does in, in multiple times during a session call balls and strikes in certain industries. We do it with plumbing, we do it with architecture, we do it with interior design, we do it with certain. And areas I think you're doing it. You're doing it with plumbing here as well. Okay. Um, but well, with but, respect to this bill, Representative Manchie, it seems you are, that one of the no. Let me ask the question. It seems okay. that one of the major issues with respect to this bill from people that oppose this bill is that it creates unnecessary and undue regulations on abortion providers, specifically with respect to the ambulatory surgical clinics. Is that not correct? It's not common argument it is not correct, correct representative, representative. I'll answer your question. It is not correct, Representative, that that is the intent of my amendment. We heard a ruling earlier that we should, we should just only speak on the amendment, so that's, that's what I'm talking about. You are talking about arguments that others have made. The argument that I'm making here is a balancing of interests and a recognition of women's health, okay? Now, I'm not talking about availability. That, 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 that stays unchanged in the rest of the bill. My amendment is very specific to the exception, to the narrowness of the exception in section well, I, that, 171, we disagree 5046, okay? So I don't change 20 weeks. I don't change availability. I don't change standards. What I say is that this definition is unworkable and too narrow and will adversely impact the medical judgment of, of, of uh, doctors and and does not adequately balance the health interests of a woman. That's hey, what I'm arguing. Me go, let me go back to my initial line of questioning. Do you remember, um, for instance, House Bill 502 that we voted on by my good friend, Representative Hernandez Luna? Uh, it, Senate bill, House bill, okay, House subject bill 502. Matter. Let me remind you, House bill 502, which 115 members of this body voted on, is, is regulate. This amendment, is this amendment about House yes, bill? Yes, uh, 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 House bill this 502. This is about this amendment, Representative. Because, okay. That that bill regulated the practice of teeth whitening, and you voted for that bill. You you, Representative Anchia. So you're talking about teeth whitening. I'm listening. I, I'm, I'm reminding you of a vote that you casted, you cast to, uh, to, to regulate, to heighten the restrictions on teeth whitening clinics across the state, people who provide teeth whitening. And to my knowledge, no one has ever uh, died from a botched teeth whitening procedure. But what we're saying here is that we don't want to uh, increase or strengthen the regulations on abortion providers, yet we're doing so on teeth whitening providers. Doesn't that seem like a double standard to you? I think you missed the point of my amendment completely now. Uh, and, and again, talking lawyer to lawyer, I, I, I raised two points. The first being that they're not 40 years worth of uh, constitutional hold or Supreme Court holdings that establish a constitutional regime that, that requires us to protect the, the health of, of, the, of the woman in this case. So teeth whitening, whole different, whole different subject, but it's not, not. It's not a whole different subject because you, you're talking about what are, what are the body seminal, the authority, what are the seminal, what are the seminal Re cases? Representative Leach, Representative Anchia, we, we respect and appreciate the arguments at the mic, the high level debate at the microphones, but please let each member speak and respond to the questions and let's stay on the subject and keep the quorum in the house. So since we're talking now about teeth whitening, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, ask, I guess, uh, a, a rhetorical question. Uh, I, if you can talk to me about the, the uh, historical precedent uh, for constantly, constitutionally protected rights under teeth whitening, then we'd be having a different discussion. So that's why I think you miss this, uh, that's why I think you missed the point of the amendment. The amendment speaks to medical judgment, and health of the woman. That is constitutionally protected. Teeth whitening is completely off the subject, but, but I see the parallel that you're trying to make. To make I just think it's, it, it doesn't work. In this case. Representative Chiu, with all due respect, thank you. when you laid out your amendment, you said to this body that we need to be careful with respect to how we're calling. You said balls and strikes. Correct. And with, this, with this decision specifically, you said that it should be only a mother, her doctor, and their spiritual advisor. And you said the government, this body, the Texas House of Representatives, has no interest in this area and should not be regulating it. False. Those are your words. No, you mischaracterized my words. I said the first part. The second part, you just made up out of thin air. Okay, you said that so we shouldn't be calling part, balls and strikes. Did you not say we shouldn't be calling balls and strikes in this the area? First, the, the first part was correct. The second part you just made up on the House floor. And I'll tell you, I'll repeat exactly what I said. 
these decisions should be the province, and I might not have used that word, but it sounds good right now, of a woman, her physician, her spiritual advisor, and her God. I did not, I do, we do not need to be calling balls and strikes in that narrow band. This bill calls balls and strikes. Representative Strickland raises 20, the point of order. The gentleman's time has expired. The point of order is well taken and sustained. Mr. Anchia sends up an amendment. Representative Lavenberg moves to table. The question occurs on the motion to table. The clerk will ring the bell to record vote. Show Representative Lavenberg voting aye. Show Representative Anchia voting nay. So Representative Scott Turner voting aye. Have all members voted? Representative, please show Representative Parker voting aye. Have all members voted? Seeing 88 ayes, 57 nays, the motion to table prevails. Please excuse Representative Guerin because the Preservation Board business on a motion of Representative Ritter. Following amendment, clerk will read the amendment. 